The 2023 NFL Draft class is stacked with talent at the running back position, and it's hard to decipher who's good and who's not. That's why every week we try to rank these running backs into tiers to get a good idea what to do with them for dynasty fantasy football. But let's head over to the tier maker. Let's start ranking these guys. Start looking at how we're valuing them for this week. But right now, we're looking at the S tier here. Bijan Robinson. He hasn't been moving all offseason. He's been there the whole time. Generational-esque talent. Going to be driving the first round. Might be the only running back driving the first round. But he is drawing a lot of buzz. He's already the RB1 in Dynasty Fantasy Football. Whether you like it or not, the value is up there. So he is going to be up there in the rankings. Going to A. And I got one guy in here, mainly due to draft capital. And right now, to where we think he's going to be going. Good chance he gets drafted in the late first, early second round of this process. He is the RB2 in ADP and 90% of ranks out there. So the value's up there. You also have to rank towards value, especially at the top end, because you push it down. Then that's one thing you're ignoring for fantasy football because you can just trade the asset. You don't have to hold it. You don't even have to see a snap with the asset. You can hold it and trade out. That's one thing you can do. So we're also ranking here for value. And Jameer Gibbs has a lot of value. Probably top 10 in ADP at the running back position right now, if not soon, due to that value. So that's something you want to be aware of because he's going to have draft capital. He's got a lot of buzz. And that is something to look at. Has a good resume from Georgia Tech and Alabama. Catches the ball in the backfield. Going to get you them PPR points. It's something you want to look at. Tier B is a clusterfuck because there's a lot of good running backs in this class. Usually if you're in Tier B here, you're going to be in Tier A and a lot of other draft classes. If we were doing tiers last year, these guys would be in Tier A in last year's class. Easy. We're going to start off with Sean Tucker. And this guy's explosive. Catches the ball in the backfield. Very productive over his course of a career over there at Syracuse. Very productive guy, especially in 2021. 2022 is used more in the passing game, ran more routes. And I like him. I think he's explosive. I just want to see where he goes in the draft. He can go around four. He can go around two. It's all over the place. And nobody knows. Just people are speculating. Kendra Miller is one of my guys. And I have him up there. Big back who's got speed. He's got bursts. Can really take over games. He's been injured. He finished the season hurts. So, you know what? We didn't get much out of him this offseason. A lot of people are not talking about him, but he is one of my guys. He is one of the guys I'm looking to draft in almost all my dynasty leagues. Ahead of value. One of the few guys. And I look for him to get some good draft capital as well. If not, I'm still taking shots on him. Zach Charbonnet. Been on him ever since he was a high school recruit. He was a big running back coming out of high school. Went to Michigan. Was productive there. Then was productive at UCLA. Improved his production in the passing game. And you know what? He's not a burner, but he can get the job done and can be a three-down guy at the next level. Zach Evans is a scary guy right now, but the upside's grand. But he's a, the scariest of the bunch here. You might want to put him in C, but he's got B or A upside, so he's just there. And really, draft capital is going to tell us what to do with him because the NFL is going to tell us what to think of him. And then Devin Chain. Is looking like he's going to get draft capital. And the thing about him is just where he goes, how high he goes. And the thing about his size, though, is a big issue. However, that speed is there. His ability to catch the ball in the backfield is there. The PPR points is there. Just want to see where he goes and see where you're going to be drafting him at. A lot of these running backs here are going to be in the second round. A couple of them in the late first. Barely any of them are going to fall to the early third. So we're going to got some values here. And Tank Bigsby, you know what? I'm going to put him back in here in the back end of B because he's a talented runner. And he's a guy that could draw some value here in this year's NFL draft. Maybe a, a round three pick or whatever. I can't really gauge it because his draft's so deep with talent. We're going to have some guys fall. But he did not play behind the greatest offensive line at Auburn. Played against tough SEC competition. Was able to turn out some results. Has a good highlight package fun guy to watch and i'm putting this guy here is the abaconda here at c but i'm gonna let you know he's one of the guys i'm looking to draft the last mock draft we put out he went in the third round well we only did two rounds but he didn't get drafted in those two rounds 
I would pull the trigger on him in the second, unless Draft Capital says he's a seventh rounder or something like that, sixth rounder. But I'm looking to get him. If he falls in the draft, I'm looking to get him at cost. If he goes up in the draft, I'm looking to get him at cost. Izzy Abacond is one of the guys I'm looking at. A lot of people are talking him up more ever since his pro day. But, you know, every time we talk about these rankings on this channel, we have a video like this about once a week, maybe a week and a half or so. It's been a while since we did the running backs. Izzy gets brought up, and he gets talked heavily about. Kenny McIntosh, he's going down throughout the offseason for me, and but he catches the ball out of the backfield. He gets targets downfield, has a good ADOT. Situation's going to matter. ADP is going to matter. You know what? Georgia Helmet, though, NFL scouts tend to scout that sometimes, especially with the draft capital. Wouldn't be surprised if he gets selected in day two. Wouldn't be surprised. Wouldn't be surprised if he falls in day three. Yeah, he could be anywhere because this is a deep class. Any other class, he'd be more regarded. But Kenny McIntosh has some goods for fantasy. So doesn't Roshan Johnson did a video on him yesterday. You may want to check that out in the archives. But Roshan Johnson... Power back. Not many power backs in this class. This is a class full of micro backs. So this guy's got some power. Catch the ball in the backfield a little bit. But B. John Robinson was taking over the show in that department. So it's hard to get a good gauge due to the volume there. But he can't catch the ball in the backfield. Big, thick, powerful runner who has some agility for his size. And rumors are NFL teams like him. And I'm always going to have Tajay Spears up here. He has a nice tape package. He's not fun to watch. And he's explosive. He does a lot of good things well, a little bit slight, a little slender, but can be a good RB2 on his team, a guy taking some workload, but can still be productive in the right situation. And then, you know what? I love Chase Brown. I love Chase Brown, one of those third-round running backs and rookie drafts that I'm just chasing. I am hammering the button on him. I'm smashing that button on him. Him and Evan Hall, but I'm taking Evan Hall later. But this is more towards feel goods for me, D, E, and F. And Evan Hall, at ADP, I'm hammering hard. Chase Brown, I'm hammering hard. I love those two running backs. Chase Brown looked good last year. Had some big games against some tough teams. Evan Hall, bigger running back, around 215 range. But catches the ball in the backfield. Something you want to look at. Tier E, let's look at Deuce Vaughn. And we're looking to draft him late first, early fourth, more than likely early fourth, unless he shoots up in the NFL draft, and we'll we'll have to reevaluate things there. But he's a late round pick with a good production profile. Size is an issue, but that's baked into ADP because you're not paying this for him. You're not paying this for him. You're not paying this for him even. You're just gonna pay him pretty cheap. Let's go with another guy here. Keaton Mitchell's got some speed to burn. Could be a surprise play. A guy that just comes out of nowhere on us. I like Eric Gray. A guy that's been highly touted throughout the years. And you know what? He's finally coming out. Not a lot of people are talking about it. His athleticism, though, didn't hit on this pro day. But you know what? We got the tape on him. Looking all right. And you're not paying nothing for him. We got to see where he goes in draft if he gets drafted. Chris Rodriguez. Not huge on him. But I can understand where he could burn us. And that being said, with FOMO in me, I'm not going to put him down to F. I can see him burning us. He's a sloth back, but he was productive at the SEC level. Would have had another big season if he didn't get suspended this year. And a lot of people love uh, Dwayne McBride. Dwayne McBride, very productive. Only caught five passes in three seasons. That's something you want to look out for. But he's another guy that's been productive who has some size. You may even want to put him here, though. The draft's going to let us know. He's a G5 guy, though. Another thing you want to think about. Another guy I want to talk about. New guy here. X Valaday. Older running back prospect. But he was productive at Wyoming. And then he was productive at Arizona State. Catches the ball in the backfield. I don't want too many guys in E, but I don't want to sleep on him either. But I just don't see him getting huge draft capital. No one's talking about him, but he does have the skill set of being able to produce in fantasy if the stars align. It's just those stars got aligned, and the odds are not saying it will. Look how many running backs we got on here that we're saying sweet nothings about. So that's one thing. And then two, I don't think he's going to get draft capital. That's why he's fluttering here between E and F. And then another guy I'm adding in here, and I did a whole video on him before. 
Lou Nichols. I don't see him getting drafted in this year's draft, but he could. Sixth, seventh round or something like that. Late if he does. Or UDFA. And the thing was, 2021, dude, very productive. Wasn't as productive this year. Was dealing with some injuries. He's not the fastest back. He's a little bit of a sloth back. But he's got some size. He's got some power. And he can really do a number of things. He can climb up a depth chart. This is a guy that could be sneaky on his. Another guy that can be sneaky on us is Mohamed Abraham. And I like him. Came back from an Achilles injury and had damn near 100 yards in every game. It, it, he was productive. He was a very productive back. Good size. A lot of people were talking him up before the injury, but had to come back another year because of it. And he's a good guy to have. I do not like Cam Peoples. Look at all the running backs here and look at Cam Peoples. And you're telling me you're going to like him. Look at all these guys. Look at all these guys. It says it by itself. Travis Dye here. You know what? He's a good college running back. A very good college running back. Fun guy to watch. But there's a difference between college running backs and NFL running backs. You can definitely tell by this list here. And he's an older guy. He's been dealing with injuries. Kind of slight. You know what? I'm just not feeling it. And then Tyon Evans is a sleeper that I don't want to pay for. I don't want to pay for him. He's going to be free. And he, I'm just going to rank him like this. Like a floater. Like Lou is and X is. He's a floater. And he's a guy that you're just going to pay attention to. Where he goes in the draft. Who drafts him and stuff like that. His tape is pretty decent. But the production really isn't there. Just something you want to watch at the late rounds of the NFL draft. See where he goes. If he gets drafted or who drafts him. Wherever he goes or what happens with him. But overall these rankings... Pretty solid. The guys that I'm hammering home is Kendra Miller, Izzy Abaconda, then some of the obvious ones that everyone else is Sean Tucker, Zach Charbonnet, obviously. But really, Kendra Miller, Izzy, Chase Brown, those are the three guys that not everybody's hammering home that I'm definitely hammering home. And then the obvious ones. I like Sean Tucker, I like Zach Charbonnet, I like Rashawn Johnson, I like Tajay Spears, Kenny McIntosh. It's a damn good class. This damn good class. But Kendra Miller on that train. Izzy on that train. Those are my top two like innocuous running backs. But they're not really innocuous running backs because they've been talked about to death still by other people. But on this channel, out of guys that I'm just going after, pounding the table for for days, those are two guys. I do like Sean Tucker a lot as well. I feel like he's been underrated. Zach Evans, I'm watching. He's the scariest of the bunch due to the price and everything we've been seeing this whole offseason and throughout the years. And obviously, Bijan's going to Bijan, Jameer's going to Jameer, and everything else down the line. Let me hear about your thoughts on the running backs below, who you're trying to draft in your draft. Make sure you smash that subscribe button on the way out. It's really going to help you for your rookie drafts. So I want to thank you for watching. I'll catch you on the next video.